Next question is from Jay Emke. What have you guys been doing to stay mentally fit during the lockdown? I've been able to stay physically active for the most part, but with the lack of social activity and outside stimulus, I'm finding it hard to stay mentally engaged on a daily basis. I like this question because, uh, you know, it seems like everybody is talking about the fitness thing. You know, how do I keep my gains? How do I not lose muscle? Like what, what program can I do at home? And and not a lot of people, and I think probably one of the most challenging things uh, for us, if not now, will be in the next thirty to sixty days, is the uh, the mental side, totally, and the insanity, and 100%. being and being okay with that. And so, I love this question for that, and I think it's really important. And I think it starts with uh, reframing your situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Sal, you you kind of alluded to this uh, in the intro today about you know. God, uh, here we're we're all freaking out and and so feeling sorry for ourselves and fighting over, uh, you know, uh, you know, conservatives versus progressives, and we're going back and forth and all this shit, and you know, oh, so pissed off that we're confined in our home. It's like shit could be way worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. Uh, we as humans have been through way worse than what we're going through right now. So I think it starts with reframing that, like the fact that. We have the technology that we have today that we could all literally be home, have our food delivered to us, stream our favorite movies and shows, and and a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people still have the capability to work from home and keep a job during this 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 time of crisis. So I think that this the beginning of this is reframing your situation and not looking at it like this this massive dark cloud because if you keep if you think like that, that it's only going to get progressively worse as as the weeks go on. So I think it starts with that. And then trying to do things like, uh, you know, I mentioned before the reading and mobility. Like I, I, I like to find one or two things that I can improve. And this can be like personal growth, like uh, whether it be educating yourself on something, learning a new skill, uh, maybe a, a tackling like Justin's doing at his house, you know, projects that he's been meaning to get around to. So if you kind of focus your energy uh, and your mind on things that are going to improve your life and mm-hmm. other aspects that you can, can still can control right now, I think those people that figure that out are are going to thrive during this time uh, versus those that are like the, you know, counting down the days, the in, like what the days are going to end. Yeah. I th- you know, you want to look at what it is about the current situation that is causing uh, most of your your mental or psychological anguish, right? So there's the the unknown factor and the fear. Um, the strongest, most based off of what I've read and researched, okay, both from this, the science of psychology and from the spiritual practices, the popular spiritual practices. To tackle that, that's a that's acceptance. Uh, if you are at odds with it, if you're fighting reality, then you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems. You accept the fact that you don't know what's going to happen. And you accept the fact that okay, this is what's happening, it makes a huge difference. Okay. Besides that, though, the other part of the and, and we're all starting to feel this now, and I think we all took this for granted. It's the lack of human contact. That's a big one. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's considered a cruel and unusual punishment um, during war to isolate. A soldier. If you if you had a prisoner of war and you isolated him with no human contact, that's considered, uh, you know, according to the Geneva Convention, uh, torture. Torture. Yeah. Okay, that's how much we need human connection. So here's what you can do. This is what I've been doing. I normally almost never FaceTime anybody mm-hmm. on my phone. Well, uh, since Always I've been now. oh since I've been so on I. lockdown, mm-hmm. I FaceTime at least three people a day, if not four, five, or six people a day. I make it a point. Now, why is FaceTime uh, better than a phone call? Because you can see their face. Mm -hmm. And that makes a huge difference in how you feel. You can connect differently. So FaceTime people throughout the day. Here's the second thing you can do. Go for walks outside and actively try to engage in the people that you see walking outside. And I don't mean walk up to them, shake their hand, do the whole thing. Obviously, you want to stay keep your distance. But every time you see somebody, this is what I've been doing. I as, as I'm approaching them, I'm looking at them, waiting for eye contact. As soon as they look at me, I say, hey, how are you hanging in there? And you know, we say a few words and then that's it and we pass each other. Or somebody's in their driveway. Hey, how you doing? It's kind of crazy, right? Crazy times. Yes, it is. We'll have a th- two-minute conversation. I stay on the sidewalk. They're all the way in the, in the driveway. Mm-hmm. And then I walk away. 
I come home feeling so much better doing that. And it's and it's an active practice because you're not getting your normal you know, uh, engagement with other people. You got to seek it out and make it a practice. And I promise you, that sounds silly, makes it, do it one day, one day, FaceTime five people, have conversations with five people, yeah. go for a walk and, ha- and, tr- and try and engage the people you pass. By. Try that one day and watch how you feel. Oh, I do that. Yeah. I've, I'm always trying to get on FaceTime now. It's crazy how much more so I'm on FaceTime these days and, and the kids as well, doing messenger and everything, talking to their friends. So important for them to maintain their relationships with their friends and everything too by, you know, we actually have tackled this and this is something that, uh, and I'm glad this question was asked because uh, this kind of follows up too with the whole homeschool thing and like being away from their friends and then the stress that brings us to try and, you know, kind of create opportunities for them to be, you know, active and productive throughout the day without, you know, causing animosity and stress that, that, that trickles up to us. And so what we've done to, to really try and like solve some of this is, you know, like create a little bit more order. I'm not the most organized person in the world, but this is an opportunity for us uh, to tighten things up a bit and, and create and restore some sort of normalcy. And so what we've done is like highlight, you know, that this time in the morning is when we're all going to wake up. And so we've all kind of agreed to that. And, you know, and then like everybody sort of has like something they can do to contribute to the family. Like they'll they'll take the dogs out, they'll they'll feed them. Like we get up, like make breakfast, like we all get dressed, even though we don't have school. We don't have to drive to work necessarily at that time. Everybody just wants to maintain uh, sort of this this time period and this, this schedule that we used to have. And then the rest of the day, like we've highlighted certain act- things that we're all going to do as a family and then times where they're going to separate and they're going to do whatever the hell they want. Um, and, you know, there's times for schoolwork in there and there's times for scheduling, you know, FaceTime with the friends. There's, you know, maybe we can walk by the grandparents' house, say hi, uh, and, and things like that. So we've, we've, we've done that and it, it has brought a little more, uh, you know, normalcy. happiness and normalcy to the family and lowered our, our anxiety, I think, uh, between us. 